Hello and welcome to Tech Latest by Nikkei Asia, where we bring you the freshest updates from the technology sector in Asia. Every episode, some of our reporters from the region will be filling us in on the tech news on their radar, from semiconductors in China to space travel in Japan to startups in Indonesia. From Nikkei Asia's Tokyo headquarters, I'm Alice French. In this episode, my colleague Jaden Agamore is talking to Taipei tech correspondents Annie Chengting Fang and Loli Lee about Intel's expansion into Malaysia for cutting edge chip production and also India's recent moon landing. Hi, Annie and Loli. Thanks for coming on today. Thank you, Jada, for having me. Hi, Jada. So, Annie, this week you visited Malaysia for another report on U.S. chipmaker Intel, right? How was your trip? I'm in Penang State in Malaysia this week. It's a beautiful place, sunny day, blue sky with a gorgeous ocean view just overseas the Malacca Strait. I'm here to visit Intel's chip packaging assembly and testing factories. It's the very first time in Malaysia that Intel opens to reporters to have a real factory tour here. To get into these chip packaging and assembly factories, we need to wear clean room suits and have to follow extremely strict protocols. No electronic devices, no camera. You cannot have makeup on your face. You cannot wear high heels or platform shoes, and you can wear skirt and no ripped clothing. And even the hair tie you use have rules. So, and you need to wear the clean room suits from head to toe and also wear gloves and uh, eye goggles. So you can imagine how complicated if you want to work inside the trip factories, even it's for uh, trip packaging. So only from this perspective, you can see how chip making is very complicated. Even it's not chip fabrication, chip packaging is referring to the steps that after chips are being uh, manufactured to properly package them to protect the integrated circuit on the chip, assemble and test them before shipment. The demand for purity is still very high. So people need to lower the chance to bring in any particles to these plants because any pollution could affect production quality. So when I went into the plant, I saw Intel's latest upcoming CPU, Meteor Lake for personal computers that that built by Intel's latest Intel 4 node that will start shipping to customers soon is already being assembly and tested in their Malaysia site here. I see. So Intel is expanding heavily in Malaysia, but how vital is Malaysia as a semiconductor base for Intel? Can you elaborate a bit on what 3D chip packaging technology is? It's very interesting to come here at a time when a lot of chip makers are building many more production sites in different locations of the world to diversify and increase supply chain resilience. But in Malaysia, it's actually Intel's very first overseas production site out of its home base, U.S., since 1972 just a few years after Intel founded in 1968. So the Malaysia site actually is a much more earlier even than TSMC was founded in 1987. So back in 1972, Intel Malaysia got only 100 staff with a small chip testing plan. And now it grows into four plants and a key chip design center and labs with um, a total of 15,000 employees locally. Um, Intel is still building two uh, new factories to make it six here. One is their first overseas plan for advanced 3D chip packaging, and another is an additional site for uh, chip testing and assembly. Advanced uh, chip packaging like 3D packaging or 2.5D packaging uh, combines different type of chips into one package to increase computing power. For example, NVIDIA's N100 high-end graphic cards that are behind the computing power to change ChatGPT 
they package one GPU with six high bandwidth memory chips in a package to reach that super high computing power to train AI servers. I see. And what is fueling the demand for these cutting edge chip packaging tech? It has emerged as a key battleground for our top chip makers from Intel, TSMC to Samsung right now to produce even more powerful chips as the conventional approach to squeeze a uh, more transistor into one chip become more difficult. So they want to uh, stack and a uh, pile a uh, different chips in one package. So they need to think of new ways to link and stack different small chiplets to become one chip. Also generative AI, I just mentioned, and the demand for more computing power in both cloud servers and edge devices also boost the enthusiasm. And the investment scale for advanced chip packaging is also very different. For example, traditional chip packaging may only need several hundred of millions of investment, but advanced chip packaging needs several billions of uh, investment. Take Intel, for example, it will invest more than 10.5 billion over the next decade to build 3D advanced packaging including its plan here in Malaysia and another plan in the state of New Mexico in the US. Also, 3D packaging, Intel said its capacity will become four times bigger from now till uh, 2025. So you can see how the demand is picking up. Thank you, Annie, for that rundown. Now over to your lolly. You were the writer for our Tech Asia newsletter this week. What stories took out to you? Yes. In addition to Annie's marvelous on-ground reporting about Intel's plans in Malaysia, I strongly recommend our podcast listeners and readers to read our India correspondent Kiran Sharma's story about India's moon landing ambition. The South Asian subcontinent on Wednesday made a historic touchdown on Moon South Pole, making India the first country in the world to land on that part of the lunar surface. And if I'm correct, this wasn't India's first try. In 2019, it failed minutes before touchdown, apparently due to a software glitch. Exactly. India's moon landing happened just days after Russia's mission crashed into the lunar surface. But this was actually India's third attempt. And the country says made it only the fourth country in the world to reach the lunar surface, which tells us how difficult it is to go to the moon. And in fact, attempted landings by Israel and Japan failed in 2019 and 2022, respectively, while Japanese private space company iSpace was unable to place a United Arab Emirates rover on the surface in April. Thanks so much, Annie and Lolly, and I'm looking forward to chatting to you guys again. Thank you, Jada. I'm very glad to be here. Thank you, Jada. Thanks for having me today. That's all for this episode. You can read more of Annie and Lolly's reporting, along with a host of other stories about Asia's tech industry, on Nikkei Asia's website, asia.nikkei.com. And if you like what you hear, why not subscribe to our weekly Tech Asia newsletter? which will be delivered to your inbox every Thursday. There's a link to sign up in the show notes. And check back in next time for more updates on the tech trends that matter.